Hello and welcome to the Scholars Sanctioned Vintage. I'm Matt Orfanello here with Eric Dupuy. Oh, awesome to be here for this one. We have a ton of crazy decks for you this time around. Uh, something to challenge what Adrian Becker was doing last time. Uh, we won't spoil it just yet. To start things off, we've got a couple of fairly standard deck lists. We've got my Rug Delver list uh, that I saw at the Vintage World Championships, and then Craig Dupuy is playing a take on a uh, previous list that I was running, Grixis Control. Uh, he made a couple of little changes, and I believe they're going to make a big impact on this game, uh, on this match. He managed to get Toxic Deluge into his list, right? He did. He did, and it happens to be quite strong versus my creature-based strategy here. Hmm. On my side of the table, I'm literally going to be winning by attacking with creatures. I've got a small amount of burn in there with four lightning bolts, but pretty much lethal damage is going to be dealt by guys turning sideways. I've got three young pyromancers, which can allow a slight combo element, uh, but gush in my list is really something that allows you to refill and kind of keep ahead uh, against the control decks or versus the combo decks. So at the end of the game, your hand is just going to be a fistful of counters, or you're just going to counter everything that they play that's going to be a real threat. Uh, I'm looking at cards like Force of Will, Mental Misstep is a full boat, uh, and then I also have Fluster Storm and Spell Pierce coming in at three apiece, even a Steel Sabotage. Ancient Grudge works as a counter spell a lot of the time to a degree when they're trying to make Vault Key happen. Uh, so there's a lot of ways of interacting with your opponent, and Gush kind of pushes you towards that, uh, often while generating tokens for Young Pyromancer. So the, the list is really solid. I've been happy with it. Um, and then, of course, Craig is, is happy with what I was playing previously with a very small twist, much less concerned about the creatures on the battlefield. So if he could trade a Snapcaster for a Young Pyromancer, he would do it in a heartbeat. He'd trade it with pretty much anything because he's really playing the control route with his deck. Would you consider trying to fit a fast bond in your list? No, I really wouldn't. Uh, and the reason why is there are matches where I literally don't draw Gush. Uh, it is nothing like the previous uh, Gush decks from back in the day where you had like four Merchant Scroll. When you have four Brainstorm, four Merchant Scroll, four Ponder, you're going to see Gush in multiples every single game. Mm -hmm. With this list, it really doesn't happen. Uh, and same with Pyromancer. This deck is... Is uh, it's not a gush deck and it's not a pyromancer deck. It's a deck that happens to feature both cards, and sometimes they're amazing. Usually they just kind of play a role, um, but it's not like you can consistently get pyromancer every game. And I think that's where the the decks that have been trying to use gush in pyromancer have really struggled. Is they've tried to leverage it like this is my plan and this is always what's going to happen. It just doesn't work out that way. We don't have the cantrips. We can't constantly force that. And you could load up on preordains and stuff and really try and contort, but ultimately you're just making your workshop matchup almost unwinnable at that point. If you have Gataxian probes and preordains and, and all of that, I mean, it, it's just really hard to make all of that work. So I like what the deck does. It, it takes a kind of a moderate approach in terms of what it's doing. It's not trying to go crazy with card advantage. You're going to gush maybe once a game. It really isn't like the old list. When I played Growatog back in the day, Every, almost every tournament, you'd get a turn one win. At some point, you'd just be like, turn one fast bond, and you're dead. It was awesome. Yeah. Like, I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun. Uh, misstep probably would change how that would work now. I, I mean, you fast bonds would get countered a lot more. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's probably not going to be able to, to shine as much in a list like this. And then uh, Craig, of course... Uh, I believe he cut a mental misstep on his side, uh, so he's going to have lightning bolts, which will be very strong against me, uh, whereas my lightning bolts versus him, I'm basically just looking to take out Dark Confidants, uh, and potentially Jace, but not as strong as, say, versus uh, a bug list that's going to have a ton of targets. I, right. Very, very select targets here for lightning bolt. Eric, you're keeping that seven. Craig's going down to six. Are you guys related? No. Craig Dupuis, Eric no, Dupuis. no, totally different spelling. <laughs> I, I believe he's got uh, French Canadian ancestry as well. Uh, we'll see. He's he's got the the French dual lands actually that I've I've helped him get. I will likely be getting him some more soon. He's got I believe one more left uh, that he's working towards, and a, a almost a whole page of French duels for him. 
uh, that have worked out quite well for him. So we've got a first turn ancestral here. And, and yeah. This stuff, I mean, that's really efficient. He's thinking about forcing it. Yeah, and he's going to force it. Now, if this force doesn't resolve, he's going to be down a lot of cards, especially if you spell pierce it. If you can have, like, a one mana uh, response, that's going to be a really tough play for Craig to come back from. Yeah, I'm definitely going to respond if I'm stacking all of this up. Uh, so we're we're stacking yeah. it up with a spell pierce, that's, and... That's just about the worst case scenario for Craig. Yeah, and that's, now, that's what this rug deck does, though. I mean, look at all of those counters. So he's, many. He's just down. He's down cards. Yeah, and he needed that Ancestral to resolve. That would have been extremely important. Uh, so here I'm able to follow it up with uh, Goyf. Like, he, instead he could have just drained that Goyf if you tried playing it. Although, I don't know if you play a Goyf into double blue, but you know, maybe you do it depending on what you got going on. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be that much of a rush, depending on my situation. I could definitely back it up with Spell Pierce and... But now that you already won a whole uh, a whole counter war, um, you just put out a threat this turn. He's got a DT for a loaded. Oh no. Okay. That's a that's a Bob. That's fine. Yep, Dark confidant. Totally. Totally reasonable. Library. Not so great anymore. Not that good. Only one card in hand. Not exactly where you want to be. I'd like to get that dark confidant off the board. Yeah. It would be helpful. <laughs> You can just casually rip a Valk into a Lightning Bolt. I don't think you'd be too disappointed. And another Goyf. Another Goyf. Just bring the pain. Probably looking for him to counter that. And a Delver. So I have a very strong board presence here. Uh, the way that this will continue to curve out could be a real problem. Any sorcery is going to add a significant amount of damage. Like a Ponder could just be a total train wreck. Yeah. Be able to set up the flip for the Delver and pump both Goyfs. He's thinking about blocking out. He's got to get that. He's got to draw at least one extra card off the Dark Confidant. Then you can block. I mean, still not great, but you basically have to. All right. Let's see here, a Fluster flusterstorm. Storm. So whatever he's yeah. going to attempt to do is going to resolve here. See what he can do to handle this board, which is quickly going to get out of hand. Well, that's... he's a tech. That's foolish. Don't do that. <laughs> that was you a silly. very rare. Silly man. Very rare forgiveness there. He's got the toxic deluge, that's why. Ah, okay. Didn't matter. There we go. Three. But four. He's gotta pay four lives. Or three lives. No, well they're they're two threes, so yeah, he'd have to pay four. That would be three devastating. 11. Oh, yeah, if he'd man. only paid the three, that would have been gross. Yeah. Like all, all those creatures that you just played. Yeah, that's that's a problem. Preordain, digging. Yeah. Now at this point, he has no guards in hand, right? He has oh, no he's got a fluster storm. Hand. He's got a fluster storm. You need red mana. He's probably not going to play a Magus of the Moon and help oh, me out with that, but I've got a fetch. Red mana. Got this. But yeah, the three for of... one is pretty brutal, though. Yeah. Well, you you two for one him, and then he three for one you. Yeah. No, he no. I he, I two he for lost three. Bob. That's true. So we've got a gush, and he'll I'm just bust a fluster, there. and I can pay the mana, right? Preordain and you floated too, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So that fluster really just being used to tax. My uh, my mana here. You're tapping so down. I'm drawing two cards, but then I'm gonna have to pass the turn, uh, barring something like a lotus into a goif. That'd be pretty cool. Oh. Okay, Jace makes things happen. It's a fine top deck. Yeah, about as good as he could hope for. And that's one of those things. That's one of those 
lines in the Grixis list that I really love is it plays all the most powerful spells like you have the Time Ball, Voltaic Key, Jace, Tinker for Blightsteel, like it just has all the broken plays. Yogmoth's will. So your top decks are really gonna be impressive. And he's correctly bait sealing himself so that you can't just untap and bolt his Jace away. And we've got a Goyf. Third Magoyf. That thing has got to be huge now. we got instant sorcery, land, creature. No artifact yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe we have any enchantments in the matchup between the two of us. No. No enchantments. So we got to bounce a Goyf, which is fine. Just replay him. Yep. I mean, if Jace is just bouncing Goyf each turn... Probably gonna be okay with that. Yeah, I mean it does give Craig those additional draw steps that he wouldn't normally have, which is almost like brainstorming. I mean, if he just bounces Goy four times, he draws four extra cards. Or I don't know if they're necessarily. Yeah, I guess you could say they're extra because if he was attacking you, it would shorten the clock of the game. Yeah, I understand the point you're trying to make. I mean, Goyf is going to close the game out in three turns, and he's certainly delaying that, Yeah. Uh, which is in his best interest. He certainly doesn't want to just get beaten to death by Goyf. Uh, it's a time vault. All right. We'll take it. What? Where did that come from? Bell Pierce. That could have been bad. <laughs> that could have been very bad. See what I mean, though? Like, he's just ripping, like, bombs right now. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a good spot. I mean, that puts an artifact into the bin. Yeah. Goyf is going to be able to kill Jace now. So, this is all pretty good. I'm comfortable with that. You definitely don't let him untap with Jace. Yeah, zero chance of that. I mean, you, there's no way. Kill a Planeswalker. Make Goyf a 6-7. Yeah. That does change the clock. All right. Getting a lot of lands here. For, oh, righty then. Hmm. Lightning Bolt to Jace. That's the game, folks. Yep, two attacks and a bolt to the face. So, there you go. Didn't actually need to kill Jace because Time Walk is amazing. Yeah. It's so good in decks like this. Anything that turns a guy sideways. I mean, I have to play Time Walk. Pretty much my whole competitive magic career, and or at least tournament playing. I, I don't know how, if we necessarily call uh, vintage competitive in the same sense because it is such a friendly environment. Uh, but time walk in a control deck versus these aggro decks, it, it's very different. Yeah. So I mean, you're definitely going to bring in your two more ancient grudges. Um, probably. Probably Pyroblast. I don't know if Nature's Claim is exactly where you want to be. No, I think uh, Pyroblast is probably all I'd, I'd bring in. Let's see if I bring in the yeah. Ancient Grudges, too. It's Maybe useful. at least one. Yeah, you got to look at what you're going to cut. Uh, I'm definitely going to cut Steel Sabotage. I'd much rather have Ancient Grudge than Steel Sabotage in this matchup. Sure. Uh, and then Mystical Tutor is very suspect. It's, uh, right, you don't want to go down a card in the control matchup, especially when you're showing them what you're going down for. Yeah, if you grab a Ancestral Recall, it's not the most stellar play in the world. Like, you're down a draw, and then if Ancestral doesn't resolve, then it's even worse. Mm -hmm. uh, it does allow you to go get something like Flusterstorm, but against Craig's deck, Flusterstorm isn't the trump that it is versus Storm deck. So I'd be much more inclined to leave in Mental uh, uh, Flusterstorm. I'm sorry, I'd much... I'd be much happier leaving in Mystical Tutor versus a Storm deck because getting Fluster Storm can actually just get rid of all of the routes. Whereas Craig is looking to resolve Vault Key, it does nothing against that. All it really does is back up your Force of Wills at that point. Hmm. So, and Jace even like Fluster Storm doesn't do anything versus Jace. So right. Mystical there, it really just gets Time Walk. And in the matchups where you're really worried about Blight Steel. I suppose you could mystical for steel sabotage. 
And I think it's a reasonable card game one, because you don't have any way of dealing with a uh, resolved light steel. Yeah, and it, it, it allows you to have those like one ofs in your deck and allow and make them a lot more effective. Um you know, game one you do have to kinda hedge because you're gonna face all different kinds of strategies. Uh, you want to have answers to things that you know are going to show up, but you also don't want to plan on facing only one type of thing, uh, only to have your plans changed and, you know, another strategy shows up. If you play all your main deck artifact hate and you play dredge twice in a row, then you, you did it wrong. I think the toughest matchup for Rug so far seems to be the Oath deck. Uh, Oath... You can probably, games two and three, like your, your win percentage is really solid. But game one, it's just really tough. Like, you have to keep the oaths off the board. Mm -hmm. Once they stick, there's really nothing you can do about it. And Gristlebrand as a card is just amazing against you. So that, that's a problem. Yeah. Like, your Delver flies, but he's not gonna, he's not gonna handle Gristlebrand. You're playing creatures, so they don't even need to have both pieces of the combo in order to go off. Okay. All right. Craig doing stuff. Sensei stop. All right, right. Right off the bat. That is a really good opening for Craig. Going to have card selection and mana to use his spells. You know, Dark Confidant would be an excellent follow up to that. Oh, Wouldn't yeah. be taking any damage to it. Jace as well. Uh, Voltaic he even could potentially be really good. Though versus my deck, the longer the game goes on, the more likely it is that I'll be able to snag that Sensei stop on the way back down. If you're using the Voltaic key, the untap top and then tap it again before the first activated ability resolves. That's a great way to generate card advantage, but I am playing four missteps and spell pierces. I'd be happy to, to shut that down as early as possible. We've got turn one, Delver off of a trop. Crack that Lotus. Play that Goyf. About as good as this deck can hope for. And got the artifact in the bin, which is nice. That's probably the hardest thing to do. Instant sorcery, land, and creature happen pretty naturally. Mm -hmm. Artifact's a little bit harder, so Goyps are going to be bigger this game than normal. I'm sure you have some sort of sorcery in your hand, like a Preordain or a Ponder for turn two, and it's likely that Craig will play, so there goes land as well. Yeah, land is very um, likely to happen. Yeah. And, and counters happen. I mean, they can just counter like anything that he does. I mean, he Ooh, should... Hop wow, trick. Spicy. Into a bolt. That currently works. Yes, it'll become a 2-3 once the bolt resolves and then state-based effects will check and he will die. So I've got to actually counter that if I want to have him survive. No no miscounting there. Uh, Both times Craig's been able to get Goyfs off the board here. But this time I've got a Delver sticking around and a bolt of my own. Yeah, so his Dark Confident that we suspect... Uh, no, he would have played his Dark Confident. Oh, absolutely. We would have played it here, so there's there's not a confident. Yeah. I'm confident that there's no confident. You're hitting him for three. Uh, he's going down to 17. Are we going to see you ponder or anything this turn, or are you just going to hold up a bunch of counter spells and a bunch of responses? Yeah, the rug deck really does like to ride out a single win condition. Now that you don't have a goif to grow, a Ponder or a Preordain might become less attractive if you already have a one-mana counterspell and you have a Lightning Bolt that we know of. Um, so we've got Mystical. Yeah. And you probably let him resolve that Mystical and just try to respond to whatever he plays with it. Yeah, depending on my counter suite. I mean, Misstep on Mystical is a fine play. Uh, I could also not counter it and hope that he gets Ancestral and then counter the Ancestral. So with his deck, I'm not really sure which I'd prefer to have the Ancestral in the Graveyard. Um, if I had to just choose in between the two, Ancestral in the Graveyard or Ancestral in the deck, I'd probably choose to have it in the deck. Uh, but going down the card off the Mystical is helpful. So he's getting the Ancestral. Alrighty. So probably sending a signal that I do not have Mental Misstep. Not exactly sure how I may have done that, but we'll see if this Ancestral resolves. 
I have a feeling you have like a spell pierce or something, but that's not going to be enough. Yeah, spell pierce doesn't get the job done here. If I had missed up, if Greg reasons through this game, I haven't misstepped Soul Ring or Sensei's top, uh, so that would mean I would have need to have drawn it recently in order for for it to really fit, you know, my play style. Just goes for it, and, and it's in there. So oh, wow. no misstep. No force either. It's a tough card to force, though. Especially when he can still pay for spell pierce and have like a one mana <laughs> counter spell of his own. Wow, and the chase. This is, this is going sideways fast. Yep. This is bad. Resolved Ancestral, Jace on board. We've got to flip the Delver. But you, at least you can kill Jace end step. Yep. Provided he doesn't have a misstep. And you don't have a spell pierce, because that chase definitely would have got spell pierced. Yeah, and no matter how he did that. And he does have the misstep, so that's just going to happen. So you must have... You must have sorcery speed... Uh, well, but why wouldn't you have played it last turn if you had, like, a preordain without any one-mana counterspells or anything? I mean, it could have been to reset up the Delver, or to set up additional Delvers. I, I'm just trying to figure out what you have in your hand right now. Because you're not doing any, you're not doing any cantripping. You're not playing many creatures. And you didn't counter Jace. So you must have Gush? Mm. Eh, I probably would have Gushed. Yeah. Probably would have Gushed to try and get some business. Make those land drops. Really confused. Just don't know what you have in your hand. It may not be very good. You can't see it off screen, but there's a poker face going on. Jace. Awkward. You bounce Delver. Uh, if, if you don't bounce Delver, then Delver could actually kill him next turn. So let's see what happens. Oh, Tinker. Yikes. Tinker for Blightsteel would. Uh... Yeah, that would spell is... disaster. Because it's not like you can untap and combo off and win in response. Even with a time walk involved. Yeah, Blightsteel is a huge problem for this deck. And I may have boarded out Steel Sabotage. Oh, things are getting just graphic. Yeah. You gotta have like lands in your hand. Brainstorm. Fluster Storm. That would not counter a Jason. That would be a reason to hold up a blue mana. Yep. And couldn't have uh couldn't have stopped the tinker. Nope. Lippity Duda, no thanks. Can't even can't even chump the blight steel to survive. Moving on to game three. So very, very powerful effects there from Craig, Jace, Ancestral, Tinker, Blightsteel. Those are the goods. That's that's how one wins. Do you swap out a Flusterstorm for like a Steel Sabotage here? Probably not. But the reason he was able to win with Blightsteel there is because he was so far ahead. Right. That is true. He had the Jace. He had all the mana. Resolved Ancestral. I mean, just, just everything. You know, I had no board, like no creatures on board. Having a steel sabotage there doesn't actually fix the situation. Hmm. Putting it back in his hand, he still has his Jace on board, he brainstorms it back into his deck. He can potentially tinker again later in the game, but <coughs> Jace is just going to run away with the game at that point. But yeah, he was able to close it out very efficiently there. I'm surprised you don't see more Tezzeret Agent of Bolas. <laughs> So there are some Mox Opal lists that'll run it. Uh, I'm just not crazy about them. They don't always work. They're just not that consistent. There yeah. are times where Mox Opal is just amazing, and there's other times where it, it just sits there doing nothing, and that's that's the problem. Now, granted, with Tezzeret Angel of Bolas, it can at least become a 5-5, even if you don't have 
metal craft that's it's unlikely to be be the case. There's just got to be something you can do that's good enough with Tezzeret, Artifact, Acceleration. Because Tezzeret is one of those planeswalkers that, like, you activate him once, and then that second activation can win the game. Yep. Um, you know, you draw some cards, whatever, attack them down to 16, and then ultimate, like... I like the guy, but it just it's the inconsistency. I mean, if we're just going to talk about his strengths uh, first, you look at uh, like first turn, you know, Mox, Mox, Talarian Academy, Tezzeret. That's basically a turn one tinker because you, you're able to make one of those a Mox, one of the Mox is a five five, untap, make the next one a five five, and you're swinging for ten on turn two. Yeah. So, I mean, it is very similar to a Tinker versus a lot of the creature-based decks. It's extremely strong. Throwing 5-5s five in the way all day long is just a beating. He's just, he's only good with, I guess, a certain uh, specific card set. Like, you have to build the deck around him, whereas a card like Jace kind of just makes a lot of strategies better. Yeah. I've thrown together things with Desert Angel and Bolas before. Uh, Painter Grindstone mix I've done. I've done it with Vol Key. I've done both of those in the same deck to try and up the artifact count. Pretty much just comes down to consistency. Uh, I've actually run stuff like Thought Cast in those decks to try and get the extra card drawing, and it just doesn't come together consistently enough. Whereas this Rug deck is extremely consistent. Uh, it, it's pretty much always going to be able to present creatures, threats, and some form of card drawing. Even just the cantrips, uh, you know, are going to provide enough selection where you're doing what you want to be doing. It's not the most powerful thing you could possibly do. Jamming a Goyf on turn one or two isn't broken by vintage standards at all, but you're pretty much always going to be able to present a clock and, and slow your opponent down. At least prevent them from winning. <coughs> it is a lot of counters. Yeah, and I mean, that's really all you want to ask for with a tempo deck. Um, you know, just get a solid clock early in the game and then spend the rest of your time and energy preventing your opponent from winning. Yep. And it doesn't have any wastelands. Uh, it's really just about countering your opponent's spells. Well, you, with your three colors, you really stretch the limitations of the three colors just off dual lands. Um, you know, a lot of decks would lean more heavily on, like, a Deathrite Shaman or City of Brass or things like that to, to help out with the extra colors. We've got a Delver on my side of the table. Craig, drawing for turn. Fetch land, Mox Ruby, nothing's changed. Uh, into a top, so very similar to the last game. Is that his only top in the list? Yeah. Yeah, into Gush on my side, so hopefully I'll be able to, to keep up with any kind of hard quality issues just by card advantage here with that Gush. Another thing with the Wastelands is they're definitely not islands, no. so they don't play well with Gush. So swinging in, Gush is active. Craig and Step Top. Probably going to get a uh, blue black. He's yeah, already no, got the it, red mana. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's It can be difficult, like locking yourself in. If you look and see three bad cards, it's really good to be able to get a shuffle in there. Right. So may have been a little greedy to crack the fetch during the end step. It might have been worth it to sacrifice that unused mana for better card quality. We'll see. It also depends on what he has for shuffling in his hand. If he's sitting on another fetch land, it really mitigates that. That's true. On the other side, a lot of a lot of games come down to um, you know, whoever utilizes their mana the best will end up winning the game. If you're just sitting there with untapped lands not doing anything, um, chances are you're not winning. Yeah, I, I would say in, in contrast to that, the using your mana, you to look at the effect of your mana. Uh, so if you're right. if you're using your mana to see one extra card compared to three extra cards, that's uh, I'm I'm not quite sure how that all fits into the theory, but we've got a brainstorm here. In a fetch land. That is how it's done. Those of you watching at home, in case anyone wanted to know. This is probably... I, I, I'll go ahead and say it's the best card, uh, best combo in Vintage. Brainstorm plus Fetchland. 
So good. Yeah. So good they got restricted. Yeah. I mean, it's right up there with uh, Yogg Moss, Will, Black Lotus. But Yogg Moss, Will, Lotus on its own doesn't draw you three cards. It's true. Smush no. them all together and you're playing oh my, my type God. of deck. So. <laughs> that is... Brainstorm, Fetch, Lotus, Yogg Will, Land for Turn, Brainstorm. Alright, so we've got Delver ticking away. Three a turn is a significant clock, and I'm floating some mana and gushing. Recently gone back to the regular Mercadian Masks gushes. I had the uh, Jace oh. for Chandra Japanese ones in there. That is a big uh, five. Big five. One red open, potentially representing Red Blast, but unlikely because that Delver's just been hanging out, kicking him in the teeth. Yeah. Probably would have got rid of that if he had the Red Blast, so I guess he's just getting five mana next main phase. I may have something better to do with my mana. Loaded land. Everboy? Something useful? There we go. Boy. Now those Japanese gushes, those are worth more than the McKinney Mass ones, right? They're the Jace for Chandra Japanese ones, so yeah. I'm not sure. I try and go with the English cards. I always feel like I want my deck to be as easy for my opponent to understand as possible. Like I don't like putting that barrier up. Um, I, I know some people really love the the foreign cards, and that's fine. I mean, it, it's really just an aesthetic choice. Uh, to me, I just kind of find I'm in a situation where I'm trying to bring people into the format very often, and mm -hmm. it's just easy to discuss a deck if they can look through it and know what all the cards say. So we have Vamp, Misstep, Force on the Misstep, Life coming off. I've got to worry about Tinker here. Thinking about that force. Luster Storm would put an end to this conversation pretty easily. As well as Spell Pierce, even another misstep. Well, Spell Pierce, the, uh, the tutor still gets to resolve. Oh, you're right. Look at that. I misread the board there. But Glad I didn't do it, it in the him, tournament. <laughs> it keeps him from just winning. Makes his decisions very different. Let's see here. If that vamp resolves, it'll go down to 10. I do have 5 damage on board. This may not be the end of the world. Or the match. But a decision nonetheless. A Tinker Blight Steel would be a problem. Yeah, because your tier two, your two turn clock uh, definitely gets interrupted by his one turn clock, and he has a blocker too. Um, I'd be able to swing overhead. I'd need some more bodies. Yeah. I need to put out a blocker, swing overhead, put him to nine, and two, then kill him on the crackback. Two lightning bolts. Yeah, lightning bolt would likely have to be part of the math. Alrighty. Let's shut that down. Yep. Win a different way, Craig. Play top. Draw top, play top, spin top. Three mana floating. You can find a Jace, draw it, play a land. Who'd have to play a land? Or a Sapphire, a blue source. Why not Lotus? Yeah. It works too. That works too. Absolutely. Can't believe I forgot about Lotus. I mean, it's only vintage. I 
Craig has a lot of powerful plays that he could make. Him having all of that mana on his side with the selection from top, not the most comfortable you could be. But the fact that he's not immediately rushing toward a specific line means that more than likely he doesn't have something that's just going to be a total blowout. We have Yogwill. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Fetch. He can use his colas to spin. Does he have an ancestral in there? What's he got going on? Got a vamp. Yeah, he could vamp. He hmm. Vamp and try and set up ball key or get tinker for blight steel. Ideally, you would want to. You'd need an additional blue source for that to. Well, yeah, you could get it set up, you know, for next turn as well. That's, Definitely. It doesn't look like he'll be able to do uh, anything lethal this turn, barring Lotus, and he would have played Lotus before the Yogg will to get the double use out of it. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Spinning top. Yeah. He's got some tough decisions to make right now. Yeah, I mean, if he sees Vault or Key in those top three, then you'd be able to tap the draw and then vamp and then lock it up next turn. Play both Vault Key, key and Time Vault and untap. So that would be a problem. Doesn't even need to have anything else on board. Nope, as long as he doesn't have a Mana Crypt or something. Looks like that's what he's Another doing. Vamp. Yeah, looks that way. Uh, the other possibility could be uh, Tinker Blightsteel. And, like you could have Tinker on top, or you could have found Time Walk, and you might want to just hit Time Walk and Tinker, although that is less likely. Finds Tinker, tutors for Lotus. Nope. All right, so I've got. Oh, that's probably going to do it. Yeah, Time Walk will do. Oh, it was the Vulky. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Time Walk again. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really good. <laughs> yep. Just closing it out there. Moral of the story, Time Walk is good. And especially when it shows up just in time. Yep. So that was uh, that was game three, right? That was it. Yeah, that was, that was it. Yeah, it. That was Eric Dupuis taking down the Battle of the Dupuis. We'll see you guys in round two. <laughs>